Okay, B'Shem Hashem Na'asev and Atziach. Welcome everybody. This week's parsha is Truma, about God commands us to build a holy temple. So therefore we want to learn about the laws of our miniature temple. Mikdash Me'at. Behind me you see a, on the holy parochet, a diagram, a picture of the holy temple in Jerusalem. This week we talk about the tabernacle in the Sinai Desert. But right here we're sitting in a Bet Midrash, a Bet Knesset, a house of prayer, which is like an embassy. The prophet Yechezkel says that this is kind of like a miniature copy of a temple in Jerusalem or the temple in... So, we want to... Today's topic is is uh, just like we have to revere and respect, you know? We have to respect the temple of God. Whether it's Moses' temple while they were in the Sinai Desert or King David, Solomon's temple, right? Or the one that they built. Are we allowed to enter with weapons into a shul? Now, this is a f- question they asked Rav Ovadia Yosef in Yehaved Da'at. And today we're going to speak about weapons in a shul and respect for the shul at the end. Because with cell phones, it's becoming an epidemic. It's becoming really... People have lost their attention span and it's, it's an addiction. Now, we know that this is... Uh, if you want to look up the source... It's the uh, fifth volume of Yechave Da'at, our mammoth giant of Torah, Rav Avadya Yosef, our prince of Torah, Teshuba Yud Chet Chai. The Azra Rav Avadya, service to the IDF in Israel is obligatory, right? So you have soldiers, thank God, and God should watch all over them, all the IDF soldiers. Are they allowed to enter the shul? with their rifle and all their Uzis, Israel can <laughs> So the reason why it should be a problem is because there's a very interesting, um, the Orchot Chaim Le Rosh, one of the great Rishonim, brings in, in from his, um, from the Maharami Rutenberg, one of the great, Sages of Europe was the Maharamri Rutenberg. The Maharamri Rutenberg says, Asur, it's forbidden to enter a house of worship, a Jewish prayer house, with a, with a sword. You know why? Because he says, when we pray with devotion, when we turn off our cell phones and connect to God's Wi-Fi and turn off When we connect to God and pray with, you know, the longer you pray, especially when it's with devotion, it makes you a long life, the Gemara and Shabbat says. But swords and weapons, they kill people. It shortens a person's life. So in a house that's designated for prayer, that gives us a long and happy life, we should not enter with what? A sword. Because a sword is making you, God forbid, a short life. And the Bet Yosef brings this, and many Rishonim concur with this idea, the Kolbo and the Tashbets. And look in chapter 151 of the backbone of Jewish law, the Shulchan Aruch. This is actually Halacha, in the codified by Rav Yosef Karo in the Jewish Book of Law, chapter 151 in Orachayim, that Maran says, Yesh Osrim, just like you shouldn't walk with, it's, you shouldn't walk into a show without a kippah, right there, the Shulchan Aruch writes, you shouldn't walk, in the same line, he wa- says, you shouldn't walk into the show with a sword, because the Shulchan Aruch brings, is um, in accordance and concurs with the idea of the Maharam, right? And it's not appropriate to come into a shul, a place that's the palace of God, right? Even though we, we don't have any temple, but this is like a mini temple, right? Same way we have to respect. And really, the source is from, we know, over here in the, 
uh, thing of the temple, the uh, yard of the temple, there was a altar. And that altar, on top of it, we only burn and sacrifice the animals. On top of the altar, we're not allowed to use a knife to shechita, to, to slaughter the animal. Why? Because, again, when we bring offerings to God, we get a long life, because God forgives our sins. But a knife is created to kill and harm. So it's not appropriate. So actually the Kwanim, if they wanted to slaughter an animal, they would slaughter, would they be able to slaughter it on top of the ramp? They go on a ramp, right? And they get to the top of the Mizbeach. No, they wouldn't allow to. They have to do it what? On the ground. Everything needs to be chopped up. You cannot bring a metallic knife to the um, altar of God. Any, any slaughtering and shechita has to be done downstairs. Same idea, because metal and knives and swords uh, shorten a person's life, and praying and sacrificing korbanot make a person's life Longer. Now, the first question Rav Avadi asks is, so let's say a soldier is playing at home, right? You know the famous joke. I'm a rabbi, I confront people. I say, where were you? For Shachrit, we say, I prayed at the Kotel. Which Kotel? The Kotel of my house. So let's say Israeli soldier, for whatever reason, is unable. He's working for the Mossad. <laughs> he needs to be undercover. Does he um, need to put away his gun? Because it would make sense that a sword and a gun should have the same law. Guns kill people, swords kill people, house of prayer is a house of worship where you get a longer life. So Ravavadya says, it would make sense, yeah, because it's also when you're praying, it makes you, so it shouldn't make a difference whether you, you understand, whether you're praying in the synagogue or whether you're praying at home, you should always take off your weapons. But, Rav Avadia says, it's interesting, the Shulchan Aruch doesn't bring this halacha in the laws of prayer. Where does he bring it, Eliot? In the laws of respecting a shul. So it would seem that you don't necessarily need to undress and take off all your weapons if you're praying at home. It's more, the reason that we need to take off the weapons is more because it's of the reverence the special honor and respect we should have for the house of God. Now, something we have to understand is, is that there are people that argue with this Maharami Rutenberg. The Rabbeinu Peretz, it's not clear whether everybody agrees with this, but Rav Avadia comes to the conclusion and says that this halacha we have to follow. Even though other people may not agree with it, since Maran says the same way you shouldn't walk into a shul without a kippah, you should not walk into a shul without, uh, with your sword or a weapon, right? Now, the question here, the Taz, Rabbeinu David, asks a beautiful question. One of the most heavy-duty and important commentators on the Shulchan Aruch has a beautiful question. Actually, you asked this question. You were right on the ball. And he says, Why does the Shulchan Aruch and the Maram Rutenberg only say a sword? Only a sword you shouldn't enter. You should leave it outside or cover it. Why? But any knife, even a pocket knife. Why? Because we know that there's a similar law by when you eat, right? The most important blessing we have to say every day, even we have to say it more intention than praying in the shul is Birkat Amazon, grace after meals. Anytime you have a sandwich or like between 20 and 27 grams, depending how you calculate it, right? You have to do what? Birkat Amazon. Now, when you say Birkat Amazon, remember I said that 
on top of the altar, we're not allowed to bring knives. Well, now that we don't have a altar, our table is like an altar. Right? So, the idea is, since we invite guests, and we pray, and we make, before we eat, we have to say hamotzi. After we eat, we say berkat hamazon. So our, the table of a Jew, by the way, a lot of people don't know this, we're not allowed to sit on a table. We're not allowed to walk on a table. Because a table, our dinner table especially, becomes a holy place. It's a place that we bless Almighty, we do hospitality. So when we're about to say grace after meals, we're kat Amazon, we have to remove what? All the knives. Now the Taz asks a beautiful question. Why by the laws of prayer, it says only a sword you're not allowed to bring, but it's, it would make sense that a small pocket knife or a knife that's under your, you don't have to, you know, leave it outside the synagogue. But, when you bench, when you say, Nevarech, Birkat you have to remove all, or cover all, any knife. So the Taz answers a beautiful question. He says, Because, usually people have a tablecloth, or napkins, or handkerchiefs on the table, when they clean up. So you could easily either remove all the knives, put them in the kitchen sink, or wrap them around, cover them with a handkerchief that you use, or put it under the tablecloth. But, it's a hassle to remove everything out of your pockets, like your, your small pocket knife and everything, and put it on the table, leave it outside. So, that's why the Shulchan Aruch, this is how the Taz understands it, that it says sometimes, you know, especially a Swiss army, army knife, you could use it to screw your glasses, your, you know, it has many different uses. So maybe you even can use it for the middle of davening or to peel a fruit to say a brach on the shul, right? So that's why, since it's a hassle, the, the Taz says that small knives, you don't have to remove or cover during um, prayer, but since it's easy to do it during benching, before you are about to say grace after meals, that you do need to cover. Now, According to this, Rav Avadiyah says, Lefi ze nira, shechaya. So we can, first of all, you have to understand. Now, unfortunately, in Israel, in 5766, we're dealing with the stabbings. So let me make it very clear. If, the, if, the, um, if there's even a 1% reason, that there's a danger in the area that the um, thing should be ready to shoot his rifle, then for sure there's no problem with him, the soldier coming in with the rifle. The only thing is that let's say he's off duty, it's purely in a security zone, right? Then, Rav Avadia says that we see that to cover it, would also be an option, right? You wouldn't need to like remove it and go put it in the different room before you enter the synagogue. Covering could also be the right, the uh, a good option because that's the same thing as a pocket knife, and especially according to the Aruch Hashulchan. Aruch Hashulchan says a fascinating thing. Rabbi Yechiel Michel Epstein says that. For a soldier, his rifle, his weapons, he's allowed to carry them on Shabbat. Now this is, not everybody agrees with this, but he says it's part of his uniform, it's part of his personality. On Shabbat, just like you're allowed to wear a tie, if you always wear it, or a watch, especially if it's a golden, because it's part of your, that's part of his norm, normal uh, uniform.
So therefore, the Yaivitz also says this very clearly, that the only problem to come into a shul with a weapon, if you come in, right, especially a lot of states here in the U.S., they have a thing, you have to be concealed, right? You have to keep it under. So if it's concealed, if it's a concealed gun, then for sure it wouldn't be a problem. So obviously, everybody can, you're supposed to wear a jacket, you know that. That's Allah. One of the laws, a lot of people don't know this. It's better to wear a hat, even if you're not yeshivish, you don't need to wear a black hat. You could wear a respectable cap and a jacket because we're coming to pray in front of the king of all kings. So especially if you have a jacket, you could cover your gun. The only problem would be a rifle that we're going to summarize at the end what, what the din with the rifle is. Now, so small knives that we could easily cover and small weapons, you should covered under your jacket. Now, there's another fascinating Gemara, Sanhedrin, we were just learning, Pei Bet, that says when Pinchas went to execute Zimri ben Salui, it says, Vayako mitocha eda, Pinchas was sitting amongst the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Supreme Court, in the study hall with Moses, then they saw the commotion. So it says Pinchas left the study hall where the um, Supreme Court was and he took a spear and he went and took out Zimri. So from here, you know what we see a lot, halacha? You're not allowed to come into a study hall with weapons also. So the Yafil Aleif, Mikan, this is a halacha. So, there's a very interesting Gemara actually, Elliot. You know what it says in the Gemara Moed Katan? It says Rabbi Yochanan and Chola Moed would cut his nails in the study hall with his mouth. Now why would he use his mouth to cut his nails? Because it must be you're not allowed to bring any knife into the Beta Midrash. And the Shibulei Aleket says this, the reason why Rabbi Yochanan and Chola Moed would cut his nails with his teeth and not a nail clipper or a knife is because you're not allowed to enter the study hall. And the Gemara also says that God knows. When we learn Torah, it makes us a long life. So the same way you're not allowed to enter with a sword or a spear into the house of prayer, also the house of study, where we do Jewish education, we study the Torah. So Rav Avadia says, it could be the laws, you know. I want to ask you a question. What's more holy, where we pray or where we study Torah? The answer is, Bet Midrash, Rav Avadia says, is more holy than where we study, just pray. You understand? So, because it's a bigger mitzvah. So it could be all, all of what we're saying, that you're allowed to enter it and cover it and so on and so forth, is for a house of worship. A house of study, Bet Midrash could be more stringent. So to conclude, Rav Avadia says, and I'm going to read it verbatim, he says, It's appropriate out of respect. We have to, it's better for all the IDF soldiers to conceal their weapons under their jackets. To show this is a house of peace, this is a house of prayer, like the Shulchan Aruch says. And it shouldn't be seen. But if it's, Impossible. How are you going to put a rifle, a big rifle, M16 under your jacket? It doesn't fit. So then, in such a case, if there's a small, even a small, God forbid, chance that he may need it because there's danger, even the most remote danger, he'll, he's allowed to keep it on him. But, obviously, if he's in a, perfectly secure place, like an army base, 
Then he takes off his rifle, he puts it where everybody else is putting their rifle, and he plays, right? Because, you know, now, I wanted to bring this a little bit into more modern... If the reason, if the, we're talking about respect of a Bet Midrash, now there's, it really, really is a big problem. I think that there's a more dangerous weapon than uh, even a rifle. And dealing with the uh, youth mini with teenagers and people, people have become addicted to their cell phones, to texting, to... Now you have, your cell phone is a computer. It's even worse. Every email. And, you know, I saw a really, really heartbreaking thing. One of the main things that stops Mashiach from coming, it says in our holy books, the Kabbalistic books, is when we don't respect our shuls, our bateknesiot, our kenisas. You know why? The Satan says, God, you want to build the holiest of holy temples. Where, you know, if the Kohen Gadol would go or if you, he would die. It's, it's super holy. But he says that they also have a mini temple, right? Our shuls are a mini temple of God. And look how much they speak and they don't pay attention. So, ladies and de- gentlemen, we see what's going on in Israel. We need Mashiach so badly. Every day I get too many texts. And WhatsApps about people that are sick, young people. The reason why you're not allowed to use a weapon in a shul is because when we pray with devotion, it takes away all the harmful plagues and sicknesses and it gives us a long and blessed life. So if we're doing something, we should do something right. My custom is I turn off my cell phone and charge it and... I would highly recommend to everybody to turn off their cell phones um, because the power of prayer is nuclear, is unbelievable. You know, we don't realize. Prayer has the unbelievable, unfathomable prayer to make the impossible possible, to cure and to make miracles. So if we have this awesome power of praying, we should really, really make every effort to not talk in the temple, to respect it. And one of the most important things in today's technological age is by turning off, like I had a bumper sticker, it says, turn off TV, turn on life. So same thing, turn off your phone and turn off, turn on life. Um, and may Hashem help us that we really merit to see the third temple with the coming of Mashiach. And by us respecting our mini temples, that will hopefully make God have mercy on us and bring us Mashiach Zidkenu very soon. Amen.